Um, what can I say? Uh, there are faults for the National Health Service, like any big organisation, but I feel there's too much emphasis by the press on the bad points. There's so many good points. They save so many people, you know, they do so many good things, but you never hear about that. personal uh, experiences uh, they saved my life um, four or five years ago I, I mean I, I died on the operating table but they brought me back uh, and that was in Torquay the Torquay uh, General Hospital and fantastic you know the intensive care unit was something to be believed uh, you couldn't wish for better so you couldn't get better service if you, if you paid for it people want to start thinking about the good things about the National Health Service and if they, if the Tory government carry on like they are, I think undoubtedly if they stay in power, we'll end up with a service that you've got to pay for. And I, I think that would be awful. You know, if people have spent their whole lives paying their taxes and, and basically that's how the NHS is paid for, by our taxes, uh, by the work we put in. And why should we have to pay for it? The most important people are the, the doctors, the surgeons, the nurses, the cleaners. They're the people that count. But yeah, I mean, uh, I read a lot about the, uh, the nursing staff being understaffed and I, I, I believe that. I think that is probably a, that is a fact. Um, I mean, those uh, nurses that I've seen work, uh, I mean, they work their socks off. Um, I read stories about them not having time to have a break and this and well, nobody should be have to work under that stress, especially when you're looking after ill people that are ill that need care and attention. They're not just people that are doing something for a wage, that most of the people in the National Health Service, as far as I, I know, um, they're, they're in it um, for a vocation. I keep reading in the paper these, oh, this scare story, scaremongering about it's going to take a fortnight to see a doctor and I don't know, I mean, you can only speak as you're fine. I think it's all out of balls. Because uh, my own particular surgery, I've been to the same surgery now for many, many years and uh, I can always see a doctor on the day if it's that urgent. But certainly I can get an appointment within couple of days uh, with, with no problem at all. So where they get all this fortnight's um, uh, time, uh, I don't know. I mean, they say, oh, these doctors, they've got 3,000 patients on their books. Yeah, they probably have. But 3,000 patients aren't ill at all the same time, are they? Um, four, five years ago, I, I was on holiday down in Devon with my wife and I suffered uh, an aneurysm in the aorta. I nearly died by the time the uh, medics got me to the hospital. Uh, straight away, sent down to the uh, operating theatre, and I had a 50-50 chance of uh, recovering, but luck would have it, I recovered. But it's, it's all due to the uh, treatment that I received uh, and, and the quick response that the doctors made down there. It was my wife really saved my life. Um, so it was fairly early in the morning, about eight o'clock time. And uh, I said I didn't feel well, apparently. I got a terrible pain. And she said, oh, you got indigestion. Walk, walk around the caravan a bit to get rid of it. But then she got up and she realised that uh, I wasn't joking. And uh, she ran me down to the local uh, A&E, not A&E department, it was uh, an an emergency hospital in uh, Brixham and uh, straight away they saw there was something serious wrong and uh, so an ambulance was called, actually there was an ambulance there so they were able to uh, give me some drugs and uh, whip me out of the hospital and uh, uh, and say so within half an hour I was in the operating theatre and uh, like I said uh, only due to their care and attention that I survived 
because not many people do survive them. My father died of an aneurysm, the same thing. Um, but so he he wasn't as lucky as I was. Um, but um, but again, you know, I'll, re, you know, I'll reiterate myself again. But uh, it's all down to the the surgeons, the nursing staff, and the whole the whole the whole thing, you know. And um, but people are so. I think it's the press mainly because they. Because good news doesn't make good uh, good press. Doesn't sell papers. Doesn't sell papers. So if they can grab hold of some minor, no, perhaps minor incident is the wrong. I mean, there are some wrong things that are done, but uh, they're so quick to get hold of it. But they never uh, they never talk about the everyday run of the mill hospital duties that carried on. You know. Um, I mean, they'd go on about uh, the cleaners in the hospitals, but I don't know, the times I've been in hospitals. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not an expert on hospitals. But, uh, uh, but the cleanliness, as far as I've been seen, concerned, has never never been a problem. I've never caught any of these dreadful diseases that you apparently can catch in hospitals. MRSA. So, yeah, MRSA, whatever. Uh, but, but again, you know, again, people are so quick to pick up on the bad things in life and it it aggravates me it really does uh, again I just think it's the the press want to sell some newspapers and TV just a bit TV news and all, all these uh, programs you see you know uh, they always dwell on the bad things they never try and dwell on the positives so I think it's a, a bad bad thing I really do and uh, again, at the risk of repeating myself, I, I've got nothing but admiration for the, the health service. Uh, I think a wonderful institution. If they've saved my life once, I'm sure they could save it again. You know, so, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, we talk about the affordability of, um, of health care is paid for from our national insurance uh, contributions and stuff at the minute, so we are already contributing to its existence. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier, you know, yeah. Our, my, grand, uh, my grandparents and parents have paid for and helped yeah, build it right, over yeah. the last yeah. 70 years. And you're paying for it now. And I am paying for it now oh, as well. Yeah, and yeah. in terms of the, the affordability of it, um, the people that do have that private health care at the minute with uh, the different um, firms that are out there now, they are, they are supported by the NHS oh yeah, network. oh yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. People might think that they can afford the NH uh, privatised healthcare now, but that's because it's supported by the NHS. So what happens to the cost of this private care when that support network is withdrawn? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. How much then does the cost of that that um, service go up? And, and then you look at the, the, and then potentially you're seeing people priced out of basic healthcare. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'd say I, I, I can remember when I was a boy, I mean, it was many years ago now, but uh, if we needed to see the doctor, uh, excellent doctor, don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with the doctors, but if you wanted to see the doctor, your mum, your dad had to put their hand in your pocket. Uh, perhaps it was five shillings, I don't know, but, you know, in 1945, five shillings was a lot of money. But if you needed to see the doctor, that's what it cost. And if you went in the hospital... You had to pay for whatever treatment you're going to have. Of course, uh, it was in National Health Care in 1948, was it? Yeah. It was 48, yeah. Thanks to Nye, Nye, Nye Bevin, yeah. yeah. Uh, it all changed. And it was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, actually, I've got a great uh, example of how private medicine doesn't work. Um, I, I live in Stevens. lived in Stevens since 1962. And Lister Hospital has always been my local hospital. Um, but a, five years, five, six years ago, they built a whole new department, uh, mainly for uh, knee replacement operations, hip replacements, uh, um, the eye, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my wife had it done, I can't think what the operation's called. Well, for cataracts. Cataracts, that's a cataracts operations. And uh, say so it was run completely by this private uh, medical firm. I can't, 
can't think of the name. Anyway, it's big news. Uh, they, uh, I think two years ago, uh, they were investigated because of uh, poor care. Uh, apparently two, two patients died under their, uh, uh, under their care and uh, they were given a severe warning to back their ideas up, basically. But last year, again, they failed miserably to maintain uh, the standards that the National Health Service required, and uh, they chucked them out, and they've taken it back into National Health. So, um, what a great uh, example for the, the great work that the National Health Service does, you know. Financial side of things, uh, like so many other people, doesn't really come into effect until you decide to get married and settle down and, you know, try to raise a family. That's when, uh, you know, life becomes uh, difficult. And uh, I think if we had to pay for, you know, health service now, people would find it extremely hard. And I think many, many more people would die because they couldn't afford to, uh, yeah. Take me, for example. Uh, I'm on um, some blood pressure tablets and, and aspirins uh, for the rest of my life because of the operation I had five years ago. Um, but I think the prescription was about seven pounds a time. Mm. So I would have to pay uh, at least 21 pounds a month for prescriptions, which, doesn't seem a great deal of money, but when you're a pensioner, you know, it's got to come from somewhere. But my wife, now she was on about, I don't know, about 10, 12 sets of tablets for different things. She had diabetes, whatever. So that would have been 70, 80, 90 pounds a month, at least. I said, well, where can people find that sort of money from? Mm. Yeah. All right, if you're a rich, rich person, yeah, you could afford it. But for the average person in the street, male or female, I find it extremely hard. And uh, the population as a whole would suffer greatly, I think. Would suffer greatly. Well, to say, I, um, I did that serious operation five years ago. I've had two hernia operations over the years. Um, I had my hammer toes broken and straightened. Uh, what else have I done? Uh, da, da, da. That's about it, actually. I don't think I've had, I had appendicitis many, many when I was 13. I remember that. It gave me six weeks off of school. Um, but the same my wife, she was treated quite a few times in the uh, uh, Lister Hospital. And uh, again, nothing but, uh, you know, excellent service. Both our babies, both our daughters were born in the National Health Hospitals, in, in the Hitchin Hospital, which is now closed, now a block of flats, I believe. Well, yeah, we've got a general election next year. Yeah. I'm not sure which way that's going to go. No. Um, oh, whoever, yeah. Whoever gets in, I think the NHS faces a, a choppy period. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you think your message would be to people? Oh, I think the, the ideals of the Labour government in the 49, 48, 49, Bevan, etc. The ideals of the National Health Service have suffered terribly over the years. Um, and it's getting worse. And, uh, unless it's put a stop to, and National Health Service becomes again what it should be, a National Health Service, I think a lot of people are going to suffer. I really do. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not a politician. Perhaps I should have been. Perhaps I should have been Prime Minister. But, uh, you know, it's, it's easy enough to sit here talking about it, but uh, it's a, a very difficult situation, very difficult. But, uh, but I think if it carries on like it is, then life is going to get very difficult, very difficult, very difficult. But there you go, that's just me spouting off, so there you go. Um, but uh, again, nothing more I can say really, Jamie. But um, well, I will say if things do uh, 
carry on and I'm recognised as a future star, I'd like you to be my agent. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope it's of some, uh, some use to you, Jamie. Thank you very much, Bill. It's a pleasure. <laughs> we did it. Very good. Sorry, Jane, I'm done now. <laughs>